that two members are absent tonight, so there are three of us here. Um, please note that face coverings and masks are required in all school buildings until further notice. So once again, I want to call the meeting to order. At this point, we'll open up the floor for public comment. Comments are limited to topics relating to school business. Speakers must identify themselves by name and address and will be allowed to speak for up to three minutes. Although the school committee may hear comments on unanticipated topics, discussion or action on topics not specifically listed on the agenda will, pe will be postponed. So the floor is open for public comment. Seeing and hearing no public comment, the public comment is closed for now. I do want to go out of order a little bit on the agenda. I do apologize to a few presenters that are in person. <coughs> So we do have Mr. Ed Kay from the NJROTC, who is, I heard he's traveling home, so I want to get him going sooner than later. But before you start, sir, we, um, on behalf of the board, because I'm not sure if you'll be here later, uh, we just want to congratulate all that are part of the NJROTC for that glowing report that we have read uh, tonight. And we'll hear more from the superintendent later. But we just want to congratulate you all uh, keep up the great work, and we will turn it over to you. I know you have some field trip requests, so Mr. Nugent's at the mic, so I'll turn it over to you two gentlemen. Um, it's, it's pretty impressive, and um, we just kind of found out about this. Uh, when Master Chief K joined us, he really built up the marksmanship program, and some of our students have excelled um, and are going to be invited to the next round of, I guess, the ball playoffs, Master Chief. But I'll let you kind of explain. Why don't you talk about the brain draw first, and then we'll take questions, and then we can move to the marksmanship. Mr. Nugent mentioned they'll stop at the Coast Guard Academy uh, prior to boarding the ferry, that uh, lo the Long Island Ferry, um, and they will stay overnight at a Holiday Inn Express. It is um, between six and eight students. Um, we can uh, five compete, three or oh, sorry, my sorry for the darkness. I'm in my car. Um, I got halfway here. That's okay. You see good. if that makes sense. Okay, <laughs> everything cut out on me right there. All right, so anyway, sorry. Um, they're staying overnight. It'll be two cadets um, per room. There'll be two chaperones, uh, Master Chief Youngsman and a female chaperone. Um, of course, everybody with the correct, correct quarry checks and everything. They'll be traveling in a 12 passenger van so as to spread everybody out. Um, and like I said, minimize the contact and the ability for contact tracing by limiting the number of students in a room. Normally we put four students to a room, but we reduced it um, to two uh, sleeping queen size beds, uh, per, you know, two queen size beds per room. Um, and then they will travel back that evening uh, after the competition is completed. Um, the competition starts at 8 a.m. So there's, it's un they're unable to uh, depart and compete and return on the same uh, day because of transportation. All right, thank you, sir. Any questions from any of the members? Good. All right, I don't think I see any questions on that one. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about the, the trip to Alabama? Sure. Um, the Secretary of the Navy holds an annual um, competition for marksmanship. The first process was a postal, which means they shot here at our school. We mailed in the um, targets for scoring, and then there's a, a, a qualification process. 
Um, two of our shooters, um, Angelica Kopeck and Reese Reynolds, qualified um, to shoot in the Precision, which is the highest level uh, competition down in Anniston, Alabama. Our team did not, but the two individuals did with their score. Um, the, the way this works is that um, it, it is a shoulder to shoulder currently um, it, uh, down at a uh, range uh, down in Anniston. We would uh, fly Boston to Atlanta nonstop and then rental van from uh, Atlanta to um, Anniston. It's about an hour and a half from Atlanta, just over the border in, in Alabama. The two chaperones, female chaperones of Marine are actually the two girls' moms. Um, and they are also, for, uh, make sure they're Corey checked. Well, the one I know is already done and I'll get the other one done here shortly. Um, it is a three day trip. It will leave on nine February, returning on 12 uh, late, uh, but that's underneath the four day window for out of state for needing of testing. Uh, just like any airlines policy right now, they will be masked at all times, masked at the range, unless they're shooting individually and then they'll be within a stall that's isolated to them uh, that they can take their mask off while shooting because uh, it's, a, it, it's a problem shooting. And then uh, they will shoot three matches and depending on how they do the championship, every, this is the championship level. So they, this will be it. We'll find out while we're down there how they did. Sir, once again, any questions from the board members? Yeah. I guess I should have one question. How, how are they funding that, that trip, the, the second trip? Uh, we, we are, we're 100 percent funding it. Uh, the, engine, the Navy is paying for it. Wow. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's great. Happen to know both those young ladies. Great, great young ladies too. That's awesome. Yeah, they they actually shot this weekend. Uh, Sunday we had a match in Reading, uh, shoulder to shoulder for the CMP championships, and then they're shooting the Junior Olympic uh, qualifier, um, you know, on the sixth of February, and then again on April seventeenth if they score well enough uh, to see if they can get to the Junior Olympics. I don't expect them to get there this year seeing as they're sophomores, but hopefully they'll be there uh, by the time they're junior seniors because um, they're really working hard. And I have some other cadets coming up that are going to be doing just as well uh, uh, on that. Thank you very much. Yeah, Mr. Burke. It's, I, my question is more for the board. Um, I just want to make sure we don't set ourselves up, but didn't we have conversation during the discussion about the trip abroad about chaperone being Oxford staff? Does that apply to all field trips, or is that just for that? Just for international travel? Thanks, Tom. Then I would like to make a motion that we approve both field trips. All right, so we have a motion on the floor to approve <coughs> both uh, trips. Do we have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? We'll call for the vote. Mrs. Griffin? Yeah. Mr. Burke? Yes. I'm a yes, that's three yes, two absent. Uh, thank you once again, uh, Master Chief K, great job. Good luck uh, to our, you know, the, everyone who's going on these trips to compete or just going on a learning process or a learning uh, kind of experience. I hope you, we hope you have a great time. Thanks again. All right, thank you. Also, one last bit of uh, information for sure. everybody just to let you know. On the 22nd of January, we're having our military ball at Holy Cross, um, and everyone is invited, and we'd love to have you there. Just let me know who's going to attend so we can recognize you as you arrive. Um, other than that, thank you very much for your time tonight. Yes, thank you, too. Have a great night. Be safe. All right. Thank you. Good night. All right, thank you, Mr. Nugent. Uh, and also thank you to Mrs. Grenett, Mr. May, for letting us take that a little bit out of order. So we can call Mrs. Grenett, uh, our pre-K to 12 health and wellness coordinator for a COVID update. Hello, Amy, how are you? Good. Uh, so uh, our numbers are mirroring other towns around us. Numbers which we 
um, prepared for, we we braced for, and, and we're, now it's, it's happening. So we're just you know working hard. Um, lots of testing stays. You know um, the, this new variant is highly transmissible. Um, luckily, it's not a viral. So um, you know we're just kind of doing lots of tests. We had quite a bit of uh, COVID cases over the break. So sending out any type of uh, communication about that would have been a little bit misleading. If we're saying, you know, we have this many in the school, many of them were not in the school. And, and it was upwards of 90 cases uh, throughout the district over break. So um, we're back more structured environment, so we anticipate the numbers to trend downward from here. That's wishful thinking, and it's, um, it is a little bit of um, what everybody expects to happen uh, in healthcare. We had today, just to give you a, a rough idea, we had uh, close to 70 test and stays today from, um, you know, in school exposures. Uh, a lot of them were at the younger grades. They are a little bit more closer, uh, the close knit group, uh, a little bit more impulsive. The, um, well, I, I guess that's right. We don't know about that for sure, but um, so we have um, changes in the guidance from DESI, as you all know, that happened over the break, which was. Um, it was a little bit of a let's hurry up and, and get everything together so we can start school year. So there's been that five day um, isolation period, five day quarantine period. And I think that's that's going just fine. Um, I I anticipated that would be happening anyway. I thought the 10 days uh, at that point was getting to be um, a little bit overkill. So um, we're happy about that. We, um, everything else is, is going in the right direction as far as we're, sports are going okay. We're gonna take that as it comes. We're just, you know, we're gonna monitor teams, monitor players. If we have to isolate, um, you know, players, a team, we're just gonna do it day by day instead of making any long, you know, stretches. Uh, what else? We had the vac COVID vaccine clinic right before break. We had 68 students um, ages 5 to 11 vaccinated. Uh, we'll be submitting another request for another vaccine clinic here at the high school. Uh, my goal is to have it um, scheduled where the second um, dose would be right before February break. And, um, and we'll see, I was also um, trying to coordinate a um, booster vaccine for the adults, for the um, staff, should I say. And um, that's, that's really my, my deal. I'm sure you have questions. Right. Any questions from any other members? Yeah, Mr. Burke. I'm sorry. Uh, Amy, you're talking about the testing. How are we doing on test kits? Because I know there's talk about a shortage of those. Right. So right now we're um, really impressed. I'm really impressed with CIC and the the ease of ordering new tests and getting and receiving them. Okay. Um, right before the break, I ordered um, 29 boxes of kits, which have, I believe, 40 in each box. Um, and, you know, it was perfect timing. We got it the day we came back. Um, I have not had an issue yet, but we are testing like crazy. We're testing anybody with symptoms. Yep. Um, you know, we are, you know, there's a, a whole list of exemptions of, you know, if, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to do this or, but we are, you know, giving parents the option that, especially on the team sports, because we haven't seen a lot of um, in-school transmission especially with lunches we you would think that everybody's unmasked and they're sitting but we have not seen a lot of that um so you know that's that's one thing but the indoor sports i feel like if you just offer that up to the other you know the exempt individuals okay i know you're vaccinated i know you're not 
um, you know, responsible to do the quarantine and testing, but if you want it, um, you, can, you can do that. We can provide that. Anything else? Yeah, just, just to follow up on that. So sure. how's the nursing staff doing with all the test and stays? Do you guys have the support you need to get that done and still we do, do your jobs? <laughs> we yeah. do. Um, we are, first of all, the nursing staff is so great and they've been <clears throat> working so hard and I really appreciate them. And, and we have, we have it down to a science and, and at first you think, okay, we have one school had 26 test and stays one morning. Okay, what are we gonna do? You don't have to do them right first thing in the morning. They don't have to line up in the hallway. In fact, that's more of a risk. <laughs> you know, get them in their yeah. seats where they're three feet <clears throat> apart and then we call them. Um, you know, and it's just when you stagger it. Um, and we have uh, two LPNs in the district that are one-to-ones. And if there's an absence uh, from one of their students, they're able to go, um, you know, come to the schools and, and help us. I'm able to go to the schools, um, you know, and, and pop in, deliver tests, help with the tests and stay if they need it. But they've been really great. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Yeah. So one question I have, and I don't know if it's more for the principals or not, but I'm wondering about the kids that have to quarantine. How are they managing work with their teachers? What is kind of the the procedure that's expected so students know what to do and so, so they don't fall behind? Yeah. So um, what happens uh, when somebody is going to be out for three or more days? The teachers will do a check-in they have to check in with the student they um, put work on the google classroom uh, and they follow up with that um, that is something that you know the nurses will send to the secretaries and the secretaries i also have to say they are amazing in, in working so hard with this um, with the keeping track of everything um, but we would send a you know this person is going to be out until this date and they will send it to all their teachers saying please check in with this student um and and that's so far i haven't heard anything um negative on the the other end of that i mean nobody obviously nobody wants to miss school but um well most people don't and and that's it's been working out i guess God bless them. <coughs> everybody's end. Right, right. For the teachers to, yeah. to you know, have to, to kind of stop what they're doing and, and get that set up for the, the students. Is, it's a not lot easy. Anything else? That's all. Right, just a couple quick things, Amy. Sure. Um, so of that, approximately of that 70 that tested today, you probably had like, what, 65, 68 were probably fine. Right, yeah. So we have, and I don't even have that number yet. Um, but it, I know that um, I get a notification every time somebody tests positive. Yeah. And um, I've seen, I think there were maybe six, seven, yeah. um, you know, in, in the district. And that could have been symptomatic ones, too. That doesn't have to be from yeah. the test and stay. Yeah. So that's my, my whole point to that is the test and stay is amazing because it's, it's saving, allowing kids. Yes. So that's 70 days of instructional individually, oh, yeah. right? That those kids are in up. school and it's just the hours. Mm -hmm. Are amazing now as far as test and state are we getting any support from the state i know in our district we get there's some uh, nurses that come in and help out and support that do we have any assistance we have not it? we haven't had to request it yet okay um but we we would certainly uh reach out and request that and i know that it is available um the problem is one day um you know it could be eight test and stays at a school and the next day it could be 26. So it's not really, a, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of, besides that in the morning, yeah. we just kind of maintain the day because what else happens during the school day? Someone twists their ankle at gym. Those things still happen. Someone cuts themselves, somebody vomits, you know, all those regular things happen. You just can't predict what the day is going to look like. And, and we're very COVID focused um, as a, society but the nurses are not only covid focused we, uh, we you know there's a there's a bigger picture there and we're aware of that we're just trying to juggle it all manage it yeah um i just want to make clear to the public when uh mrs granat was talking about uh the vaccinations uh some clinics that will be offered just want to make it clear because there is sometimes some misunderstanding out there 
we are just we are just vaccination sites. We are setting these up right. for opportunities for parents to come. There is still a process that needs to be followed. Parents have to give permission. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want anyone out there to think that we are um, forcing these on anybody. We are just using it as a we're using our buildings, your town buildings, taxpayer buildings to use that as as vaccination sites where this work can be done. And again, that has to be done through parents uh, signing up, giving permission for them to do that. So I just want to kind of <coughs> dispel any kind of oh, rumors yeah. that might fly and, out there. And again. really the, the, the offering is in response to requests. So when people are saying, are you gonna have another one? Are you gonna have another one? Well, we feel compelled if we have the ability to offer it, then we will certainly offer it. Um, but you know in no way is that a, a pressure for anybody and we get phone calls do they have to do it absolutely not right you know that's that's everybody else's choice right absolutely mm -hmm. so thank you any any anything else all right thank you amy all right thank, thank you, you. Amy. all right mr may you're up next athletic director uh, just a quick athletic update thank you for having me tonight Thank you for coming. Um, just to get a quick recap as we go through. First, uh, the athletic trainer came on board this fall. She's worked out outstanding. Um, you know, being able to not only monitor our athletes with their injuries, to be able to get them back onto the playing fields and the courts with the treatment process has been fantastic. Uh, so, so that was a great addition to the athletic department, you know, this fall. And she's worked out fantastic through the fall and, and as we started the winter. Uh, through the fall, we had a pretty successful fall this year. Uh, we saw the boys and girls soccer team both qualify for the state tournament. It was the first time the boys had qualified in, in over 10 years. So that was good to see both teams um, won their first game, boys in thrilling fashion down in Holbrook in double overtime. So, so that was great to see. Uh, our football team, as many people know, advanced to the state semifinals and made the final four, had an outstanding run. Um, that, that was, that was a gr great for the program and the community to see a lot of people out. And our, our chair squad actually won uh, Southern Worcester County League Championship this year. So that was, I believe, the first in uh, school history that they had won the Swickle Championship. So, so that was fantastic, you know, w w as far as that goes. So it was a pretty good fall. Uh, we've rolled into winter. You know, we're just getting underway a couple weeks in, you know, early in the season still. Thus far, I, I, you know, the community has been fantastic. You know, I know it's difficult, you know, being indoors with the athletes have to be masked and the community has to be masked as well. Um, I can't say enough positive things about our community here in Oxford. You know, student body, adults, families that are coming in with really um, complying with the mask mandate. Uh, and it's been, it's been nice to hear. It's been nice to see and, and, and it's, it's been welcoming. Um, so thank the community for that. Uh, and, and then uh, just a, a quick update on lacrosse. I, I believe since we um, last you had voted and approved, thank you for that. The MIA has approved it. Uh, we are able to go forward and be able to do it this spring. Our student athletes that are interested in lacrosse will register through Shepherd Hill um, through their program. Um, just a couple of things. The uh, Shepherd Hill did also get an eighth grade waiver because their high school is nine through 12 which means that for us, eighth graders will be eligible to participate in lacrosse at Shepherd Hill as well because they have that eighth grade waiver. Um, their user fee schedule is what we'd have to use. So for Shepherd Hill, it's $150 per sport. So any athlete that's looking to play lacrosse would be $150. They do very similar to what we do where well, it's way for free and reduced lunch. Um, so, so that's good. And then their athletic director just wanted me to make sure that, you know, it's, um, that they do issue helmets. However, sticks and pads w are at the uh, student athletes expense, similar to you know baseball with the glove and cleats and things like that. So it's pretty excited. I know we have a lot of kids in the building that are excited about getting a chance to play lacrosse this spring. That's great. So, yeah. Any questions for Mr. May? Great. Hockey's coming down the pike too, right? I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I keep trying. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Kevin. you, Kevin. Thank you. All right. Uh, student representative Molly Raymond, you're up, Molly. The students had a great first week back from break. The NHS is collecting toiletries, travel, and full size to donate to those in need for our monthly service project. ROTC is excited to host the military ball on the 22nd. 
And as this and prom are coming up, we have a dress closet at OHS for students if they would like to look for formal events. If anyone has any formal dresses to donate or would like to look at the dresses, you can reach out to Ms. Nugent. Um, and there were five OHS core students and one band student who were accepted to the Mass Central District course following their video auditions that were submitted on, in December. Two of these students scored high enough to audition for the Mass All-State Chorus, and these auditions will be submitted on the 22nd. They also have a group of seventh to ninth graders who are preparing to audition for the Mass Junior District Chorus and band auditions as well. These virtual auditions will be submitted in February, and that is it. Names on any of them, or are they keep them No, Ms. Ruckowitz didn't send me them. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Molly from anybody? No? All right. Thanks, Molly. Thanks, Molly. Thank you. All right. We do have some meeting minutes to approve. I believe we could bundle them all uh, into one motion. There's four uh, meeting minutes, right? Tell them we'd be able to do that. So if you've had a chance to look at them, we do need a motion. We can't, like I said, we can bundle all four meetings in if somebody wants to yeah i'll make a motion to accept the meeting minutes do you need me to read them out or i would just say the meeting four. minutes of the yeah the december the four proposed meeting minutes for tonight so we have a motion is there a second all right any more this any discussion i just have to abstain from december 20th because i was absent that evening okay so should i do them individually then or do we are we okay to do it no. All right, so we'll make a motion to approve all four. Um, um, the motion has been made. Second and call for the vote, Mrs. Yes. Griffin. Mr. Burke? Yes. Three yes, two absent, and then two yes, one abstention, two absent on the 20th. Uh -huh. Thank you. All right. Uh, superintendent's report, Mr. Lucas. All right, great. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to start off uh, in your report is the NJROTC annual inspection report. Uh, I was fortunate enough to meet with the commanders, uh, the area commanders. Um, they over and over could not speak highly enough about our program. So impressed. Congratulations to Master Chief Youngsman and Master Chief K, the students, the student leadership. Um, phenomenal job. They spoke very highly not only of our commanders, but also the students and especially the student leaders. Very impressed that there were so many girls involved in the program. Um, and there were probably six or seven officers from all over. Um, they are all going to take things back that our ROTC program is doing and embed them in their college ROTC programs at places like Holy Cross, WPI. So it was really impressive to get to speak to them and hear them firsthand how impressive the program was and things they wish they had or were trying to do and are going to embed with their own students was wonderful to see. So I just wanted to put that report in there um, that it should be public knowledge how great the program is. I believe they got all grades of outstanding on the cover sheet, um, but it's something we can be very proud of. And there are very few high schools in Massachusetts and the country that offer this program. So it really is a great thing for Oxford High School and for our town. So I wanted to make sure that was highlighted. Um, I'll go through the new hires. I'm going to go out of order a little bit here. First, the new hires. Um, Helen and I wanted to start just kind of announcing this so everybody knows what's happening. Um, we have two new substitute teachers we'd like to welcome to our team, uh, Maura McNamara and Marielis Villegas Rosa. Um, we have a new recess lunch aide, Lisa Russo, at the Chafee School. We have a new integrated preschool teacher, Nicole Wynn Lee, at the Clara Barton School, which she just started today. Um, ben Grinnett uh, is one of our new substitute custodians while he's home from college. And Hannah Confer is a new substitute recess aide um, at Barton and Chafee. So we want to welcome them to our Oxford team. Just wanted to mention that for you guys. Okay. And then finally for me, the school year calendar draft. I'd welcome your feedback on it and any thoughts or discussion points. Um, I'll kind of take you through the highlights of a little bit of what's new. And if you want to stop me at any point and ask questions or wait till the end, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, this calendar was reviewed by our administrative team at a meeting with input from principals and central office administrators, which led to some good discussions about past calendars, things that have happened in the past, things we want to bring back, new things we're looking to, to try in the future. Um, was really a valuable conversation. I also then ran the draft by the OEA leadership and they are soliciting their membership for some feedback on this calendar. Um, so I'm just asking you to review it tonight. I'm not asking for a vote because I'd like to let the OEA have some input to it too. 
Um, so maybe at the next meeting we can vote, and I believe Kim Davis will want to be at that meeting too. So first of all, the school year will, will start a little bit earlier with new staff coming in on August 22nd and 23rd. The first PD day for all staff would be August 24th, and the first day of school with students would be Thursday, August 25th. Um, we'd start, so we'd start a little bit earlier, three days earlier to be exact, um, than we did this previous year. Uh, it would be a little bit different. Um, we were hoping to try uh, no school on Friday, September 2nd. That gives families a four-day weekend, Labor Day weekend, to travel. I know other school, school districts have had success with this in the past. I think it might have been in Oxford at one point. Um, we would like to try to bring that back if that's okay with the school committee. Um, our second PD day would be September 20th, and our third PD day would be November 8th. Those are both election days. We would prefer to have the elections just have our staff in the building and no students. Um, I have spoken with Town Hall about possibly down the road <clears throat> moving the elections out of those two schools. It is a lengthy process, but we have started the discussion. I'm looking forward to continuing that with Town Hall. Um, it's not something that can happen overnight, but we are working on that because we would prefer just to not have it in the school <coughs> the same time our kids are in there. Mm -hmm. um, November 10th would be parent teacher afternoon and night conferences at all schools. Kind of a new idea. I know that's a little bit of a busy week. We have the PD Day on the 8th, we have Veterans Day on the 11th. Um, we're going to try to do the afternoon sessions and then the night and have all schools on the same night. It's a new idea, but we can talk about it. We would stagger the night sessions with the schools. For, uh, so Chafee would be 4.30 to 6.30, Barton 5 to 7, OMS 5.30 to 7.30, and the high school 6 to 8. Our thinking was would it, would it might be easier for some parents to just do it in one night with everything with practices, dance, dance practices, rehearsal, stuff like that was just the thinking on that. We can, we can talk about that and go back. It was kind of stretched out over a week, but we didn't know if it would be easier for families if we had all the same sign-up program for all the schools um, and they could book their appointments that way and see their teachers. So it's, it's a thought. It's some, try to send something new. Um, on your draft, the <coughs> day before Thanksgiving should be a half day. That's my fault. We are looking at doing some different things that week, but then pulled out of it. So the 23rd of November should be a half day. December 23rd is a half day. Our fourth PD day would be in March. We felt like it was a little bit too close this year, being right after vacation, being January um, 14th, is it this week, this Friday? Mm -hmm. So we wanted to spread that out a little bit into March um, and break away from that a little bit um, and move that fourth PD day. One of the things that you won't see on here is we have school occurring on Good Friday, which is April 7th. Our thinking in that was we don't celebrate other religious holidays and have the day off was an idea to do it, do it then. That allows us to get out on June 9th, which is a Friday, but we can discuss that obviously. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's a quick recap of the calendar. So I'm open to any thoughts or ideas or suggestions. Yes, Corey. Yeah, Mike, thanks. Um, I think just coming from a, a large family, the idea of, oh, Parent-teacher conferences on one night. I, I'm willing to give it a shot, but okay. it's, uh, <laughs> I know, it sounds, daunting, right? sounds a little okay. daunting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I second that. Okay. <laughs> but you know, I'm interested willing to see to how give it a shot. One, one time deal. Interested to see how it might work. Sure. All right. Okay. Yeah, I just have the same sentiment. I, I feel like it might be very difficult depending on what size your family is. Okay. I think we us. We might obviously not be the norm. Not the norm, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so, but I, I, you know, it's an interesting thought. I'm, I'd love to see what we use in the district to get parents to sign up, if it's sign-up genius <clears throat> or if it's something where, yeah. you know, every parent has their specific time and right. it's known well in advance. Right. And then what do we do if parents don't get a slot? Well, I think what it, it's happened at the middle school a lot in speaking with Amy, the principal at the middle school. Yeah. Middle, a lot of middle school parents don't have time to get in, and we've actually talked about possibly doing a second half day, but then you need to do that district-wide. Right. Um, and the other schools, feedback from them is they don't need another half day, so we don't want to use that um, learning time for that, even though the middle school could use it. And what typically happens is teachers do meet on their own on their prep or after school. They'll Zoom or meet with parents when they can. So. And that's hard too, you know, I, I would it want is. things to be as equitable as possible for yeah. all of our teachers in all of the yeah. buildings. Right. And so I think, you know, when it's contractual and if everybody has the same expectations, um, 
I think it's appreciated by unions. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And um, <clears throat> I would just like to make sure that that's kind of something that does occur. And, and it might be one of those situations where some teachers are just in the building and they don't see a lot of parents. Right. Where other teachers are in the building and they, right. they certainly they're do. they flooded. Yeah. Right. Um, it's interesting to hear about uh, Good Friday. Um, I would, I, I don't know how many people would may call in for that day. It would be, I don't know if that's something that we could reach out ahead of time to kind of know about, or do we just kind of have to play it by ear and see if it's a day where we have a lot of subs? Yeah, I think we would play it by ear. Obviously, we would honor anybody's religious exemptions. Right. It needs to have the day off. Um, our feeling was in talking to our administrative team that it would not be many people. Okay. There'll be very few. So meaning they would not need to take their own time to take that day off? Uh, they can use personal time if they want. They can, or we, the other option is you can offer them to do, to make it up with a PD session of six hours or something like that. I know that's what other, some other school districts have done, so that there's no, nothing on their attendance report. Um, so those are some options that other districts have done when they removed Good Friday. Yeah. I was just curious about that. Opportunity to make it up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I have a couple questions, Mike. So there's four full PD days, right? <coughs> Correct. Are there any half-day PDs, or is that just four full? Is that Just four full. We don't have any half-days planned yet. For PD. Yes, but we might want to revisit that this summer with, with folks here okay. and have a different discussion. So I have a couple so. of questions about half days. So you said yep. the 23rd is a half day? Correct, that day before Thanksgiving. November? Yep. Yeah, and then the 23rd of? Of December. Of December, that Friday's Last a half day. Last day before break, yes, the Christmas, Christmas Eve. I just, I'm gonna push back a little bit on the half days, because I just, I, I don't know what kind of value we, we get on days like that. Mm -hmm. I would prefer to see full days. I don't know how, how the board members feel. Or just have the, have the whole day, you know what I mean? Have the whole day off if you're going to have the 23rd before before Thanksgiving. Right. Either take the full day off or full day in. To me, the 23rd of December, that should be a full day. Um, mm -hmm. That Friday before, I mean, mm -hmm. if people are leaving, leaving, yep. you know, or have it just be a full day off. I'm just, do we, I know, do we know what other districts do? Because I know mine, we've never had a half a day on that yeah, day. We're full I always in. thought it was weird when my kids started. Full, Usually a PD. Yeah, sometimes I think we always did in my school. We always had a half day that day before you get out. Yeah. Um, but a Thanksgiving Wednesday has always been a half always. day. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty universal. Yep. Um, but I could I could do some checking and find out. A lot sometimes of people I think have it's like a day PD. off, though. Like I, just completely have, off. Yeah. Yeah. We have the whole day. I just. Okay. Again, to come in to, to check off a day of instruction, I get it, but I just feel like you're not getting any bang for your buck. <coughs> so okay. So have the full, take the whole day off. And then just add a day at the end. Okay. Um, that's just my, again, yep. one, one person's opinion. Yep. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I mean, it's an interesting thought. I have, I, I've been in a district where it is a day, but it's sometimes a half day with PD that follows. And then again, you know, it's hard. Some people would argue that people aren't really paying attention on that half day. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's something maybe to research and discuss again. As when the sure. whole board's here. Sure, I know this year it was a half day. Right. Not, oh, it always, it's yeah, always, it has been. always has been. Yep. Okay. Yep. And could you just describe the 10th of November again? That's a half a day. Half a day of school. Of school. And then afternoon conferences. conferences. Yep, in the afternoon. And then also the night conferences that night. So how do we get. So parents would have either the afternoon to sign up or the evening to sign up for conferences. So how do you get the staff here at night? Is that within they, the they have the, By contract, they have one night for parent-teacher conferences. Okay. This past year, we ran it the following week on the 15th, 16th, 17th was when we did it this past year. We were how thinking of getting everybody geared up, really communicating it, advertising yeah. it, getting our parents excited, hopefully, and do it all in one day. Yeah. And then that week before Thanksgiving is a complete normal week. Yeah. That, was, that was our thinking. So how do you get them in the evenings on the 13, 15, 21, and 22? Because they'll have to be in for the evening for open house. It's in the contract too. So that's Correct. What I'm saying. Is it, that's all in the yeah. contract? Yes. Yes. Both are in the contract. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? I know we'll be looking at this again. Anything else? Kids having grass? Huh? 
good to have a draft. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. So we'll have another draft for you at the next meeting. Okay. And we'll invite Kim to come and we can talk about it further. Um, that's all I had. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, school committee. Community Service Award winner. We do have the winner. We did have 123 responses, so thank you to all those who submitted uh, their vote. And I certainly don't want to pull a, uh, who's the guy on Family Feud doing the, <laughs> the uh, pageant? Uh, who's the guy who runs Family Feud? Don't watch Family Feud. Oh yeah. God! No one. Is that Steve Harvey now. Steve Harvey. Hey, Steve Harvey. There you go. Steve there you Harvey. Go, Make sure I get this right. All right. So the winner for the first round of the 2021-2022 Community Service Award winner uh, is Rick Vincent. Uh, congratulations, Rick. Um, and thank you to all the other candidates who were nominated. Um, was a rather close vote, but thank you uh, and congratulations, Rick. And hopefully, we can see you at the uh, next uh, school committee meeting to present you that uh, award. So, thank you to everybody and look forward to the uh, second one soon. All right, we are club advisor. Uh, we do need to vote uh, this in. So, I don't know, superintendent, if you want to read that in or give us an explanation or how do you want to? Yeah, this was simply changing to a uh, different stipend. Uh, robotics club is no longer active, and the art club is thriving with student membership. And so that was the hope was to switch that over to that club for them, for those kids. All right, we need a motion to approve that change. I'll make a motion to approve the change. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Anyone hearing none? Call for the vote. Ms. Griffin? Yes. Yes. And I'm a yes. Three yes. Uh, two absent. All right. Terrific. Thank you. Subcommittee reports. Policy committee. Mrs. Griffin. So we had a meeting. I'm trying to remember the date. I was it January 10th? No, that's tonight. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. December. December. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the date. It's escaping me. But we sat down and we went through all of our um, uh, policies as far as pertaining to business. Um, and we got a lot of recommended policies from MASC for updates. Yeah. And we basically went through and um, agreed to kind of push forward all the recommended language that MASC has um, suggested that all committees adopt for their policies. Um, this was a policy that we were missing uh, emergency closings uh, so that's here tonight for you to review and we do have some other policies um, that will be coming shortly that relate to our uh, practices with our uh, business and um, again just based on what MASC has suggested that we should adopt yeah. um, and that's pretty much it at the moment so do we do we want to wait for the other two members or do we want to? I suggest that we don't waive the second reading. That way the other two meet members can be there, but this can be considered a first reading. Right? Okay. If you two readings. Um, I just think they should have their. Yeah, no, I agree. This is the next meeting. This is just verbatim taken from MASC. Yeah. yeah. Just to add in because we didn't have And it, this but, yeah. policy tonight for the first reading is EBCD emergency closings. I think it's kind of uh, appropriate considering that we're getting cold weather and other things that are coming down the pike, but it's about ne needing to close school when there's weather conditions that are not, you know, safe for students and um, giving our superintendent, you know, that ability to make those calls, which is pretty much already in place, but this is a policy to memorialize that. Can we add that to the agenda next time to have a, a second reading on this? All right, thank you. Anything else? Nope, that's all. All right, personnel and negotiations subcommittee, Mr. Burke. Uh, yeah, we did have an initial meeting uh, to begin uh, discussing some upcoming contract negotiations. We were waiting on a date from OEA yes. and the MTA on when we can have our first meeting with them, and we do have a meeting this week, Thursday, with the custodial union. Um, help me, what's that for, Mike? 
think that the uh, what's that meeting for? That's they want to uh, reopen. Yeah, something right. Discussion of the contract. Yeah. Wage reopening. Yeah, wage reopening. Wage reopening. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we got coming up. Okay. It's all coming soon. All right. Thank you. Um, school buildings <coughs> and safety. Not nothing from our vantage point to update. Um, I know we did look at the uh, safety manual. I didn't know if there was any update on that. I know, didn't you have some? I just, I still would like to go review it at some point. I haven't, okay. haven't made yeah. an appointment with Mr. Uh, Lucas, but I'd like to go through it okay. and see sure. what changes have been made. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Uh, district accountability and curriculum, Mr. Burke, anything? Nothing new in that committee. Okay. Uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, subcommittee. Uh, no new updates, but we do have a um, an appointment, so we do need to take a vote. Uh, so to the members from Helen Coffin, the executive assistant, um, January 6, 2021, 2022, uh, FY 2022 subcommittee appointment, please vote to appoint the below individual to the diversity, equity, and it should say inclusion subcommittee for a term to be effective immediately through June 30, 2022. And it's Jennifer Warren Diamond, the town manager's designee. So we do need a motion to uh, move her to that committee. I that second, second it. Any discussion? Call for the vote, Mrs. Griffin. Yes. Mr. Burke. Yes. All right. I'm um, yes. Three, three yes. Uh, two absent. And we do have a warrant report from Mrs. Griffin. Yep. So that's for this evening, January 10th, 2022. Um, I signed a warrant for a special payroll dated December 14th, 2021 for $2,461.50. An accounts payable warrant dated December 21st, 2021 for $220,392.38. A payroll warrant dated December 23rd, 2021 for six hundred seventy four thousand two hundred twenty one dollars and nine cents. An accounts payable warrant uh, for December 28th, 2021 for thirty one thousand five hundred ten dollars and forty five cents. An accounts payable warrant dated January 4th, 2020, 2022. <laughs> Getting used to that one for $52,923.69. A payroll warrant dated January 6, 2022 for $644,950.24. And an accounts payable warrant dated January 11, 2022 for $44,446.91. That is all. all right, thank you, Mrs. Griffin. Uh, members form. So, uh, Mrs. Griffin, anything? It's the only thing that's concerning me, quite honestly, is the cold uh, weather reports that I'm hearing. I know that we have a lot of students that live around this, that walking boundary and that do walk to school, and I'm kind of wondering, um, you know, what's going to be happen happening for them. I know some of them are working to make plans with other families. But I think some other families too might not have somebody to drive their kids and the kids might be expected to walk. It might be dangerous. Um, so. We don't have anything special planned. Um, I do know in talking with other superintendents today in the area, yeah. uh, everybody's planning on having school on time tomorrow. I know we had Boston and Springfield and Chicopee I've heard so far have canceled school tomorrow. Worcester, Worcester just did. Oh, Worcester did too. Um, and Worcester did too. Uh, th I think the bigger cities have, the, have different challenges, and I think there's some COVID potential issues there too. Um, but right now, we, pl we plan on having school on time for tomorrow. But we'll keep an eye on it tomorrow and see if we get any reports from parents. Yeah, that's so. the only thing that concerns me is our students that are yeah. walkers, and then when it's inclement weather, and you know, the few days afterwards, they're still walking sometimes through through places that are not, you know, plowed, yeah. um, paths that are not shoveled. Yeah. Um, yeah. So is it, I, I mean, I don't know if it could be done on short notice, but is it a possible to like in the future, maybe just have a hotline or, or a place where parents could call? I mean, we, I know we do have that mini bus now. So if a student couldn't, you know, get to school safely, you know, maybe, you know, they wouldn't be able to get maybe to school at the start. 
but maybe if that bus could go out and pick up some kids, you know, you said right. a staff member go out. Are you talking about the activities bus? Yeah, the, the, By the just passes. because we, we wanted to do that where I work, um, I was told those particular buses cannot be used for the purpose of transporting students to and from school. Interesting. You might want to look at it, but I that's, will check on that. that's what I was yep. told because yeah. we, we okay. actually were trying to do huh. the same thing for some students to get them to school and we were told to take them on trips. Can't, can't interesting. use it to transport to. Them to All right. Yeah, it's just something to, th you yeah. know, again, I don't yeah. think it could get rolled out by tomorrow anyways, right. but I mean, I guess if, if any parents in dire need out there, they could reach out to the school principal or, yeah. the, or the central if office. They reach out to, to their principal, the principal will help them out. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure something yeah. out. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah, we want to get the kids that. back in school. I didn't realize any of that. Yeah. Yeah. Think out of the box and yeah. Right. <laughs> by, by trying to help like kids that. out. All right. Anything else, Mrs. Griffin? That's all. I'm, I'm just thrilled with the glowing report that we received for the NJROTC. Mm. That's amazing. And those awesome. field trips for those students that are able to make those great gains in all the programs that are being offered is it's outstanding. Yeah. All right, Mr. Burke. Yeah, I think just some of the great things we heard tonight about our students, the, uh, besides the NG, NJROTC, uh, the fall sports, the chorus and band members um, making districts in all states. Uh, it's really impressive and kudos to our students here. Um, I was going to ask about our next public forum, but I see that on the agenda. Is that yeah. you're going to discuss that now? Yeah, um, I was going to discuss it, but, you know, to your point of the, with the, um, the policy, I think we need to wait for... The other two members to yeah, kind of nail down. Schedule it. Yeah. So if you could just add that again for, as a Helen put it on the agenda as a reminder for me because I forgot to talk about it one other time. Um, and just one one thing for me, um, <coughs> I'm not sure if how if I'm going to ask this correctly, but maybe some of my board members are curious. I, I'm wondering if Kim Davis, the OEA president, is going to be in. Uh, to, to discuss calendar next time. Could she give us kind of a brief overview of how the union leadership works? Like how decisions are made? Um, what's the executive part of the union look like compared to just the member? What kind of say do they have in the unionship? I mean, she comes and talks to us and gives us an overview, which is nice, about how everything's <coughs> going. But I don't know the ins and outs of how the leadership works out here, the union leadership. So I don't know if any, if that's a possibility. I want to give her enough notice so that I, you know, she's not blindsided at a meeting. Um, but I certainly would like to know just how, you know, how the executive part of their leadership works and then how decisions get made and then what kind of input do they get from the full membership uh, with those decisions. So I'd be curious if that's something she could present to us. Uh, other than that, I do not have anything else. Are there any other future agenda topics that we need to add, think about? <coughs> well, if anything comes up, next meeting is Monday, January 24th. So if there's anything that comes up in between now and then, you get it to me that Tuesday or Wednesday, well, Tuesday before that Monday, we can get it on the agenda. Uh, we do have one final public comment. I will open the floor for uh, public comment. Seeing no one in the public out there, we will, unless Mr. Generico has something, we will, <laughs> we will close the floor for public comment. Um, and we do need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. A motion and a second. Uh, call for the vote, Ms. Griffin, yes. Mr. Burke. Yes. I'm a yes, three yes, two absent. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for watching.